So, as much as God opens the door to major crusades, where hundreds of thousands and thousands and thousands of people attend, or in conventions, stadiums, arenas, sometimes we use playing fields because of the hugeness of the crowd. But I also love going one on one. I love going like now that I live here in Albany, Georgia. I can sit comfortably in my office and train other people and maybe get on radio and television and be begging people to send me off for it and telling them that, you know, I want partnership, people that can partner with me while I'll be sitting lazily. Lazy. And Jesus talks about being slowful. Lazy. And I would have been busy collecting money, offering from people, telling them just, you know, partner with me while I'm lazy. And a lot of preachers, you're so lazy, lazy, really lazy. And you're begging for money to take the gas, but you're going nowhere. So very sad. And, you know, if you have Christian listening to me, you are following a church leader, a pastor, an evangelist, or preacher on the radio, television, or behind the pulpit, begging you for money, telling you that he wants to cover up you know, the entire region of going to the city, other cities, other states, to preach. And when he or she doesn't even move, that person's a lazy person. If you're following a lazy person, you're a lazy person too. And if I give you an offering to such kind of lazy person, you're going to give an account to God. So God is calling for people that are goers. Hallelujah. They're not comfortable in their comfort zone. They want to reach out. So for nearly five years that I've lived in this city, after having left Florida, I'm just telling the same thing, not only telling, but I'm doing it. So I'm going from city to city, county to county. I'm not just sending people out. Telling them, I will train you, I'll make you, you know, get a diploma, get a degree, and then you go out and do it while I'm hiding. I don't do that. I'm imitating Jesus. Hallelujah. He led the path. He led the charge. He didn't send the disciples to go two by two while he was hiding. He led them first. Then later on, he gave them the opportunity to go and practice what he did. And then he came and joined him again, and he took them out. All the way to the Garden of Gethsemane. When he was about to be arrested by the Roman soldier, he didn't, I mean, he didn't hide and send the disciples forward to be arrested and gunned down and beaten by the Roman soldiers. He went forward while the disciples were busy sleeping. He was scared. So a true leader doesn't lead from the behind. A true leader leads from the front. Hallelujah. I know there are a lot of you believers as well as Church leaders, you're listening to me. Don't touch that radio dial or the television dial. Listen to this. You might get mad now. You say, if this witch is saying something, he has no business to say it. Look, excuse me. If God tells me to say it, I will say it. So I have business to say it. Oh, hallelujah. So now we are going all over the cities and communities of Georgia, taking Georgia by storm. And some of the amazing things we are hearing from People, and this is coming from sinners. They're so amazed. They say, we've never seen this kind of thing. Christian groups on the street doing this. And they're hearing me publicly standing there, not only talking, but demonstrating. Hallelujah. You see the police officers saluting us. The sheriff saluting us. They're seeing our courage. You know? We stay there under the heat of the sun, rain, shine or not, cold. We are standing up here. And I'm preaching, we're singing, preaching, then we put action, demonstration, signs and wonders on the street. Hallelujah. And this is how, if you're a church leader, this is how you see your church will grow. Your church doesn't grow by you hiding and begging people to send you money. It grows by you setting the tone, setting the good example. Hallelujah. So, we just hit the city of our future uh, about nearly over a week ago. And see it here. I, I, I don't mind letting, you know, sometimes when we get blessed and we have some revelation, we want to hide our strategies. I don't do that. This is why a lot of preachers come, sit down and listen. And I said, what I'm doing here, I will show you the secret how I'm successful like this. You go and do it. If you can only overcome your fear and do it, you will see the results. Some believers come, they're hungry, and I'm seeing it so much. And I say, look, in our church, our pastor's not doing it. You know? And you pastor, sometimes you don't know how you're hurting your people. Because you have so much of talents and gifts. You allow your fear to make you hold yourself down and hold your God's people down. And they're willing. They want to risk their lives to go out, but they're looking for their leader to set the tone and set the example. 
So look at it here. While we were in the city of Israel, we went there. Look at it. This began last year particularly. I mean, 2012, we did it in the flea market. I was there for months. The reason is that in the flea market, for example, a lot of people go there selling their products. And those who go there buying or just walking around, shopping around. The crowd is already there. Just like if you read the book of Acts, chapter 2, chapter 1 and chapter 2. You see, when that Pentecostal power, what, you know, the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came down, God had already driven or he had magnetized or he had allowed all the Jews that were spread out in the diaspora, in all the nations of the earth. If you read the book of Acts, you'll see the, na- the list of nations. A lot of them came from African nations, some came from Europe, some came from Asia. During the Feast of Pentecost, the Jews, wherever they were dispersed, they had to go back to Jerusalem, to Ju- Judah, to participate in this special feast of the Passover. So God already arranged and planned out and set up a table for the early church. But guess what? The early church, the believers were hiding. They were scared. Why? Because they thought that Jesus was killed. So every one of them would be killed by the religious leaders because of persecution. Fear held them hiding. But God had already pulled the crowds from around the whole world. The Jews were gathered in Jerusalem. All that needed to be done was the connection of the two points. The weakly, vaguely intimidated believers facing off the crowd now that is being starved to death with religiosity but, but was going nowhere. So the Holy Spirit came in between the two now and broke the doldrum, broke the connection, broke the engagement. He messed up the fear of the believers and messed up the whole nation of those unbelieving Jews. What did he do? He created a supernatural wild wind with a storm. The wind blowing, the meteorologist had no idea what was happening. It was just a divine intervention of God. As the wind moved and came towards the upper chamber, where the believers were hiding, suddenly the wind stopped right there, and then they saw a mighty flame of fire on top of the building, and fire seemed to be on the inside. Can you imagine the fire brigade? Driving with sirens, screaming everywhere. You know, and then finally when they came, they saw that the whole thing stood up on top of the building. The disciples had thrown more fire on their heads, 120 of them. Now the crowd standing, God had already pulled the crowd, not only in the city of Jerusalem, but so close to them, close to the building where they were. All they needed to do was to step up, put their heads out and speak. So a lot of us preachers are, we, we've shot ourselves on our foot. We're still so st- st- scared. As the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, A lazy person says, you know, he's scared to go out because there's a liar. Imaginary liar. In their own imagination, there's a liar. They don't even want to go outside. <laughs> so guess what? Thank God, Peter and a few of them step out. That is so that God had created an opportunity for them. And look at it. He preached. And few of them stood up too and spoke. Out of the thousands and thousands and thousands of people that God not only went into the city of Jerusalem, now he moved them from the neighborhoods to gather around the entire building, that upper chamber, and suddenly they preach, and about 3,000 people converted. What an opportunity, a blessed opportunity in these guys. Preachers, understand this. The devil is already dressed up. Why are you hiding? Why are you scared? So God is using this African man to come to America and stare up a lot of things. For over 30 years in nearly 40 nations around the world, God has been using Dr. Andy Aldu mightily, according to John 14, 12, to raise many physically dead and dying people, heal the sick, operate many special miracles, as well as winning many sinners to Christ. As the author of the internationally best-selling series known as Raising the Dead, Dr. Aldu has been honorably received by many world leaders. Now, ladies and gentlemen, log on to RaisingTheDead.org for additional details because Dr. Adu is coming to your area for a great meeting and you need to be there. If you want to speak foreign languages without going to school, 
Read, Is Speaking in Tongues from God or Satan by Dr. N.D. Outer. In this resourceful book, you'll discover the importance of speaking in tongues by God's power. Get your copy now at MyMiracleTV.org or call 1229-638-1065.